Hi, I'm Mike Cleaves and I'm a garage shop fabricator. I got started doing this uh, just with a love and interest in cars in general and I was fortunate enough to to meet uh, a number of people that uh, were good fabricators from the Tech Center, uh, Harry Kennedy, uh, John Glover, uh, Red Twite out of uh, California. I got started uh, in just collision work, which is your normal process when I was young, 14, 15 years old. Uh, but then uh, I was able to go to uh, a place called National Coach Engineering. This would have been back in the 70s. And uh, we built custom cars and made convertibles. A friend uh, introduced me to uh, Terry Murr, and he got us into the... Uh, exotics, the Ferraris, uh, the Maseratis, those always need, those are always hand-built cars so we've always had to make parts for the cars and that's what actually propelled us to to equip the uh, shop to to build the parts that we're having to make for each car that we're doing. What you're looking at is a 1964 uh, Alpha Sprint Special Low Nose Coupe. Uh, very rare car and we've got to do uh, the lower sections of the car they need new metal because they're rusted out. Yeah. This is a uh, 1969 Maserati Ghibli. Typically uh, Maseratis, Ferraris uh, of that era uh, rust really bad so for this car we've made new quarter panels, we've made new doors, uh, new uh, floors this is a uh, new fender and the weld has been put in where the original weld was down the side of the fender here and it's going through a whole restoration process and it will be uh, better than new when we're done in the sense of there will be no bare metal on the inside uh, originally they don't coat the inside of the panels on these cars so we we epoxy coat everything so there's no bare metal uh, he'll never have to do this again we're going to show you uh, what uh, the method is to custom build a car in shaping metal and aluminum or steel uh, using uh, power hammers and other types of equipment. What we normally shape with is the uh, on compound shaping is the power hammers which have been used in the United States for uh, many years. A lot of aircraft was built using power hammers. I'm going to take and uh, show uh, what it takes to make this panel, a flat piece of steel, into a uh, half of a wheel well for an old car. Uh, and it's done just on a power hammer and made into a, uh, uh, a new part. Uh, you're going to do that uh, gradually moving out and it's going to just keep pulling the metal over. You can see that it's pulling this, uh, shrinking all of this outside flange. You would continue and go all the way around doing that. And uh, after, uh, after a bunch of passes, you're going to end up with this. And what we normally will do is when we're shaping the part, it's going to be shaped when we're doing this and then we would hammer this all smooth after we're done shrinking it and then we just put this back into shape and it gives us uh, our finished part. There. One method uh, uh, that has always been uh, used in uh, coach building metal shaping is the sandbag and that's one method of doing it as well as in conjunction with using uh, power hammers or English wheels where you would just go in and, and shape 
shape the metal that way. Then you go into the power hammer and, uh, and smooth that out. And to take a part like this, which would start out as a flat sheet, uh, you eventually uh, end up with a part that is a wheel well for a, a Porsche that's a finished piece. This is a 1957 Porsche 550A and this car was uh, bad enough where it needed a complete new body. Originally these cars were, they're all hand built. They were uh, acetylene gas welded and that's how they're going back together. There's a, there's a weld seam uh, running down this fender here and uh, over the wheel arch here. Uh, there's a number of welds up on the nose here. And those welds are all in the uh, exact location as they uh, were originally. So all the details on on all the areas of the car that uh, that we're putting together up here are exactly as per original. This is uh, where the Clecos hold a car together at, during the build stage. And now this car here, this is uh, the first car that we've uh, done, and it's all riveted together. Same number of rivets as the car originally had, uh, and it, all the floor has been riveted in, in the trunk. The reason uh, that that the parts are gas welded versus TIG welded is the appearance of the weld from the back side of the weld. You can tell whether it was gas welded or TIG welded. Uh, another reason is is originally they were gas welded. Also when it's gas welded, it anneals the, uh, uh, the heat affected zone is annealed at the gas weld uh, along the weld and it's, and it's soft and uh, the weld is 100% uh, is penetration and uh, it lasts uh, uh, over a TIG weld, it lasts much longer as far as uh, for sheet metal fabrication uh, for a body build like this. Approximate cost on one of these to do one of these uh, is it's normally based on an hourly rate, uh, but you can run into a two to three or four hundred thousand dollar bill. As far as hours and what it takes to go through one, you can spend three to four thousand hours uh, uh, building a new car and, and, uh, and finishing the car out. The reason that uh, you go to such an extent to save these cars is there was only uh, approximately 40 of them made. Uh, very valuable. They're scattered around the world. And uh, so they're worth saving. And so whatever it takes to save that car, uh, it's worth pursuing. Hi, I'm Mike Cleves, and this is FF Journal TV.